Hi, folks. Hi. Hi. So, my name is Steve Farias. I'm the Director of Forensics at the University of the Pacific. I'm also the outgoing Northern California Forensics Association President. Uh, for many of you that are new to the organization, or this being your first tournament, you're not just participating at a tournament for the first time, you're participating as a member of Northern California Forensics. And what that means is we are a compilation of colleges and universities that come together, not just weekends here in April, but throughout the year, and hopefully you'll come back and join us, to produce community, produce good scholarship, and yes, to compete against one another. But one of the things that is integral to Northern California Forensics, and one of the reasons that I was happy to serve as president for the last two years, is that it's the type of community that you continue to give back to. I was a four-year student at the University of the Pacific. I got my master's at the University of the Pacific, and I've been lucky enough to come back, and this is my fifth year back after working on my doctoral degree. That means that I've spent 11 years, or a third of my life, as a member of this community. That means I've seen people come and go, new students come and go, and with all of that change, the one constant is, is that forensics makes an impact on you whether you compete in one tournament or tournaments throughout the year whether you compete for one tournament or for four years. And so I hope that your experience here at Spring Flame will motivate you to come back and continue competing for your institution and continue giving back. One of the things that we do at Spring Flame that's unique is that we also recognize our year-end award winners. What that means is, at the end of the year, the best two- and four-year competitors, along with the coaches that continue to give back, are recognized. And we try to do so, and hopefully they're here, but if they're not, to let you know some of the people that you will get to know over the next couple of years, and hopefully you'll be one of these people that we announce later on at Spring Claim when it's not your first tournament, but maybe it's your 40th. So I'm going to announce the end of the year awards. I have awards for both two and four year schools, and even if they're not here, we, they all deserve a round of applause, because this recognizes a year of hard work. All the things that you did today, these folks have worked the entire semester, the entire year, both fall and spring, to accumulate uh, points and recognition so that they can be recognized by their peers. So we're going to start with limited preparation speaking. That's extent and impromptu. We have an award for two and four year. So the two-year outstanding competitor in limited preparation speaking from Chabot College is Nicole Taylor. your outstanding four-year limited preparation speaker from CSU Chico, Giovanni Fernandez. <laughs> we will next move to interpretation events. So our most outstanding competitors in prose, poetry, TOI, duo, and DI. In the two-year division, this person not only was our most outstanding competitor at the two-year level, but also broke at nationals for both community colleges and for uh, at the National Forensics Association's uh, overall open division tournament. Um, so recognizing from Diablo Valley College, Nicole Sims. In the four year, another person who was able to advance into the elimination rounds, it's usually about 10% or so that advance at the, Northern, at the National Forensics Association's National <coughs> Tournament. Uh, from the University of the Pacific, Jocelyn Howard. <laughs> we'll next move on to platform speeches, which is after dinner speaking, informative speaking, persuasive speaking, <coughs> and rhetorical criticism or communication analysis. In the two-year division, a name that you've already heard but demonstrates their excellence and hopefully their continued excellence in this community, from Diablo Valley College, Nicole Sims. Okay. And the outstanding competitor in platform speaking for the four-year schools is from the University of the Pacific, Cassidy Johnson.
We'll end with the two styles of the debate we do here in Northern California Forensics primarily, which is Lincoln-Douglas debate and parliamentary debate. Uh, we'll begin by recognizing the outstanding competitors in Lincoln-Douglas debate at the two-year level. Uh, from Jabot College, Joel Brown. Yeah! Outstanding competitor at the four year level is from the University of the Pacific, Robbie Prasad. <laughs> In parliamentary debate, a student who hopefully will come back to us knowing some of the things that uh, their program is going to be going through, but we still value them. A lot of people to come back, so hopefully uh, they're able to join us next year, is from Santa Rosa Junior College, Kirsten Lofton. <laughs> At the four-year level, uh, a competitor that I know has impacted a lot of people that were judging you today and um, has impacted both the two- and four-year level of parliamentary debate is from San Francisco State University, Virginia Kerr. has impacted so many people is because we host a debate camp at the University of the Pacific uh, for that's about a week long. If you're interested in doing that, we host a camp that does both debate and IEs. And also there's a camp that gets hosted by NCFA, a one-day camp, just before our season starts in August that students come to as well. Virginia volunteered at both of those. And as a university student at San Francisco State University, continue to give back to her junior college, Santa Rosa Junior College. So it should come as no surprise that your peer coach of the year, which is to recognize students working and assisting with a program, goes to San Francisco State University's Virginia Coach. <laughs> the next set of awards go for Outstanding New Coach, Outstanding Coach of the Year, and then Distinguished Service Award. So there are two people who have given back or who have been coaching either for a short period of time or for a long period of time. For both the Most Outstanding Coach and New Coach of the Year, we had a tie. So we'll be recognizing both at this award ceremony because both deserve our recognition. The first person is not new to this region in the sense that they have been in Northern California Forensics for at least four or five years. I met this individual as a transfer student, um, and sometimes the type of competitor you are is not indicative of the type of coach you become. <laughs> and that's because the type of investment you provide or the type of empathy you develop when you start caring and trying to invest back in students is much different than when you're competing against them, but it can also be just as rewarding. So the first New coach of the year to recognize a coach in their first or second year of coaching in an NCFA program is from the University of the Pacific, Paul Villa. <laughs> the second individual I have only just been introduced to this year, but they have already had an immediate impact on our community. Uh, their program has often been one that is trying to bring more and more students to increase both IE and debate output, but also they have to travel from a long way, so competing in this region is very difficult, but that type of commitment to the activity is the type of commitment we want from all of you and we hope all of your coaches provide. So our second new coach of the year is to recognize a coach in their first or second year of coaching in an NCFA program is from Butte College, Shannon Troxelon. <laughs> And so it's one thing to talk about a coach and trying to revive a new program or work with the program or continue to commit to the students that may have not had that commitment before. As I said, I hope all of your coaches do that. That's another thing to do it in your first two years in a program and to also do that while volunteering your time and service as our next NCFA secretary. So our first coach of the year to recognize a coach in reviving an existing program creating a new program or demonstrated excellence in forensic leadership or education is again from Butte College, Shannon Troxel-Andre.
Our second coach of the year is the type of competitor that used to have a really good time in their forms of debate. Uh, I have heard stories that they might have dressed up as a cow at one point. Yeah. They might have uh, very much engaged in critical argumentation and tried to engage their students at that level as well. You see that now with both of their students in parliamentary debate that qualified for the NPTE doing an excellent job. You see it in the fact that one of their students won Debater of the Year and another one won in Limited Prep Speaker of the Year. So they invest their time not just in what they did as a competitor, but in demonstrating the values of competition and the values of particular arguments and the values of particular ways of engaging with people. And it's still that in their students. And I can't speak enough of this individual uh, because they also volunteer their time as the vice president of this organization. They volunteer their time tabbing three or four tournaments a semester. And they do it all while being a parent. And I know that a lot of times we get thought of as just coaches or as teachers. But we also lead personal lives, and those lives impact the way that we can provide to you. And without trying to sacrifice anything, this person gives and gives and gives of themselves. And that's emblematic of the success that their team has. So our second coach of the year goes to Chabot College's Stephanie eisenberg Tom. <laughs> Association over a significant period of time. This individual was judging and he'd come back to forensics while I was still a competitor way back in 2009. Really long time. And that person used to follow teams to rounds because they wanted to learn how forensics was updated because they did forensics back in the 70s and 80s. So they wanted to learn and they continued to give and give. They started a free Debate camp that I talked about that we host as a one-day camp now as part of the NCFA uh, tournament schedule. They brought a program from relative regional competition to becoming a national powerhouse. They won a national championship in 2017. They spent time and time again giving back to the community. I can't tell you the number of students I have that said that this person provided them with the most empathetic feedback and also valuable feedback. I don't know a single person in this room, even if you don't know them, that could say a mean thing about this person because the amount of time they dedicated to their students, dedicated to their students' learning, and dedicated to the learning of other students is distinguished. Because Hal Sanford from Santa Rosa Junior College, and I'm giving, away, giving it away, is easily one of the most memorable figures of this community. And this year, Hal has dealt with family issues, health issues, and he's continued to show up and say, you know what, I've committed to this. And if there's anything about service that we can say, is that when you commit, you don't forego other responsibilities, you simply continue to commit to the one you've already guaranteed. So for a lifetime of service, we ought to give a standing ovation to Santa Rosa Junior College's Hal Sanders. awards to give out for this tournament specifically that mean a lot to us. And so with that being said, I want to uh, introduce Janine Witzel of Solano College to give our last two awards. Well, it's always typical at the end of a tournament you get the welcome to Solano College or the welcome to the college. Um, Whatever happened today, whether you advanced into a final round or not, one thing is certain, and that is you're a better speaker now than you were when you got here this morning. Uh, that means for folks who are novices that are competing for the first time, that also means for those of you that competed all year and decided to be a judge at this tournament, you're a better competitor now than you were when you got here as well. Because there's something about being on the other side of the table and thinking, I have to write some things that are both positive and then constructive on my ballot. And how do I now make a decision on 
first, second, and third. So hopefully, as you move forward into the next year of competition, you have a better appreciation for what goes and understanding for what goes on on that other side of the other side of the table, other side of the room. I want to talk a little bit about the Robert Hawes um, Judging Award, uh, which started a very long time ago. I think, uh, without a doubt, none of you were born at this point in time. Some of your judges might not have even been born at this time. <laughs> Uh, and it's usual when you get to a national tournament that you hear about somebody's life, and that's why their own award has been named that. Uh, this is one of those instances. So 29 years ago, when I was coaching here, uh, at the beginning of the semester, a student came in, uh, as they all do at the beginning of the semester, and talked about wanting to compete. And so I, you know, doing my, what all, we all do is like, have you ever had a speech class? How did you come to be here? You know, have you had any theater experience? Did you do debate in high school? Uh, and this. Uh, Robert, uh, Robert Hawes, uh, I found out had had previous uh, forensics experience uh, at Orange Coast Community College, which is one of the uh, large powerhouse community colleges down in Southern California. Of course, I was very pleased that he decided to continue competing here. What I didn't realize until, you know, a couple weeks later was that he came back to forensics. So he'd done about a year and a half of forensics, went off and did some other things, came back as a, someone in their mid-twenties to do it again. So it's like, oh, this is awesome. Someone with experience who, you know, already kind of knows the ropes. Uh, Robert was fairly successful in competition. He did both in TERP and also debate. Uh, so he did reader's theater and debate, which is a really unusual kind of combination. Uh, and he had, a, like I said, a fair amount of success. But what he really excelled at was being able to kind of assist some of the novices. Uh, and he would give them some guidance. And it wasn't always just the nice stuff. Sometimes it was, you know that introduction doesn't make a lot of sense. Or, you know that piece of evidence you're reading doesn't really link to the argument. You might want to think <coughs> about something else. And what I realized then over the semester was that Robert, uh, both the other coach and I, Evangeline East, realized that here's someone that's really like a coach in the making. I mean, this person knows not only how to compete, but knows how to give growth-producing comments to his, his fellow teammates. Um, so he competed the whole year, uh, and of course after nationals, is kind of usually, usually the case, people go off and kind of disappear and try to pass their classes but with the remaining you know, three or four weeks they have uh, in, in the semester. Uh, so I didn't really see Robert until uh, <coughs> about two months after that when he was in the hospital. And so I went to see him in the hospital, uh, and I said, Robert, what's up? And he said, um, I, I didn't realize this at the time, um, but Robert had AIDS. Now, I know this probably doesn't have the, the weight and the severity when I say that word as it did in 1989 and 1990. Because at this point in time, people can live a long and healthy life being HIV positive. Back in, 18, back in uh, 89 and 90, it was a death sentence. It was a very absolute and definite and very time-specific <coughs> death sentence. And so I said, I said, I was shocked, and I said, I'm sorry, Robert, I never knew. And so I, the next question then, as he's in the hospital, as I asked him, you came back to forensics. You knew how much time you had, and you came back to forensics. What, um, why? why? Why would you come back to bad coffee and bad donuts and long hours with no break? I mean, why would you do that? And he said, why would I do anything else than do forensics? So this person could have ended their life uh, traveling, uh, doing a whole bunch of other stuff, but decided no. He wanted to do poetry, he wanted to do prose, he wanted to do debate, and he wanted to do reader's theater. And that's how he wanted to end his life. And Robert passed away about three weeks after I saw him. So at that point in time, Solano uh, was running a novice tournament in December, and we decided that we would have a judging award for the student who exemplified the best in coaching and the best in judging, and we named it after him with, with no question. Um, and I'm very honored and proud that NCFA has decided to continue giving this award at our Spring Fling uh, tournament. So, and I, I want to let all of you know, uh, from the coach's perspective and from a judge's perspective, you all matter to us. You all matter. Uh, not just because this is how I get my paycheck in part, uh, but because watching you develop and find your voice, learn how to speak with dignity, learn how to disagree with dignity, uh, is vital 
uh, in this world. And I am, as with many coaches, I am so proud of what you're doing. And as you move on, I know you're going to use that voice with dignity to make some change. So we decided, <coughs> because we were, we were addressing both on ballots, uh, online ballots and also uh, physical ballots, uh, we decided this year to give two different awards, one for the electronic ballot and one for the uh, uh, real life writing with a pen kind of ballot. So the first ballot going to the uh, electronic ballot, I don't know which school this person is from, but this first award goes to Adam DeCamp. <laughs> selflessly. Um, this person continues to, to give not just uh, to, to the, my program, but also to all of you in volunteering to do this um, and doing it in ways that was not thanked uh, nearly enough by me along the way uh, and doing things for my own tournament that hopefully helped but probably only guided her in the wrong direction for so many other things because uh, I, I have wacky reasons to do things and hers are much more logical and much better and much more efficient. And so I want you to take one more applause and give it to Jennifer Bain. The second closing piece of business. As I said, I am the outgoing president, so I would like to introduce you to our two new executives. Because not only am I the outgoing president, uh, but Ryan Guy from Modesto Junior College. <laughs> Secretary, and I feel like uh, Ryan has been our de facto secretary for about uh, like six or seven years. So uh, it's about time that he gave way to somebody else. And so, as I had mentioned, our new secretary on the executive committee will be from Butte College, Shannon Troxel Andreas. And then our new president to serve two years and to present these awards next year is from uh, Hartnell College, Daniel Lopez. Everyone probably wants to know what it is. Uh, while Steve is opening his present, uh, I would like to take a second to thank him for his service. Um, <laughs> it's a beer drop. <laughs> and I was going to make a snarky comment about it having to be a Raiders one, but I figured that's like its own. Oh, it's, 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 okay. so, uh, it's, it's your own thing. Um, it, I've been in this region for actually several years. I've coached at a few... Uh, schools, and for the past few years I've been at Harnell, and I think it's sometimes overlooked what it means to be the president of an organization like this. Uh, people will ask for you to act unilaterally on their behalf, and then be upset for people who wield unilateral power. Um, <laughs> presidents will be pulled in multiple directions. Um, there are competing agendas with various teams. Our students have various needs. You're all unique. Uh, and that's never a good thing to tap the face because I think that you get in a room with us where a bunch of fairly intelligent people who teach people to communicate for a living, uh, those, those discussions are not as pleasant as you would think. <laughs> there's good arguments all around and then how do you make a, a fair decision. Uh, but in my dealings with Steve, he has always been fair. Uh, I think he's taken his time to hear what everyone from the institutions have to say. I've never gone to a meeting and felt that my concerns uh, were not taken seriously. 
and I think you've done a wonderful job prioritizing the needs of the region. Uh, to, to occupy a position like this is to be a steward, uh, someone who protects something for those who uh, come after them and for someone who tries to maintain the progress of those who came before. And I think that you did a mag you've done a magnificent job. And uh, I think I had a wonderful example of what I should keep in mind going forward. And I thank you for your service. For all of you, uh, you will always recognize me at the tournament. I am the brown dude with long hair and the nerd shirt. Uh, that aesthetic will probably not change. <laughs> and in that vein, I do have a closing statement for all of you from one of my favorite people, Tataki Kakashi. Uh, some people get the reference. Uh, Kakashi Sensei once said, The next generation will always surpass the previous one. It is one of the never-ending cycles of life. Yes. I saw what the generation before you did. I look forward to seeing how you will surpass them. Best of luck in your careers going forward. I hope to see you all.